Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects Quick Tip Scripting Tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make an After Effects Control Null Generator script. What this will do is take any properties you have selected and create a control null which will then replicate these properties and allow you to control them all from within one layer. And this will give you a bunch of power to adjust things more easily without having to go down into a whole bunch of different menus over and over. And this is a very common technique used in a lot of uh, setups in people's templates, projects, and pr other things. So we're just gonna be going over how to make this script super fast from scratch. But first I wanna remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this on GitHub as well as uh, follow us there and follow us down in the description on Instagram as well. If you're not a member of the Discord server, come and join us and can help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and get cool perks at the same time. So the idea of this script is going to be very simple. We're going to create a function that takes in any selected properties or properties we give it, and then it's going to basically create a controller null, where if the one already exists, it's going to add to an existing one. It's going to add all of the selected properties with their names. It's going to set the value that we detected at that property as well, and then uh, use an expression on the original property uh, to make sure that it's linked to this actual value here. So I'm going to start by creating a new script. We're just going to make a generalized function here called generate controller null, and we're going to take in some properties. Then to run this, I'm going to say generate controller null, and we're going to provide it with our app.project.selected properties. So that's going to assume we have, uh, actually we need an active item, which will be our active composition and its selected properties. So then inside of here, what we're going to do is first we need to either check or generate our controller null. And I'm also going to surround everything in a begin undo group and an app.end undo group so we can easily undo everything in one click. Then we're going to check for our controller layer. So I'm going to say var controller uh, layer or controller null, whatever you want to call it, is going to be equal to get layer named and it's going to be called the controller null. Now we're going to create one other function just to check for a layer. And what we're going to do is call get layer named. And the string is going to be whatever we bring in here, in this case, controller null. And then we're going to loop through the active composition, say var i is equal to one for i is less than or equal to our app.project.activeitem.num layers, increment i by one. If we detect that in our current composition, the layer i dot name is equal to our string, then we want to return that layer. So we'll say app.project.activeitem.layerI. And we kind of already know that it's going to either be there or not. Um, if it's not there, if it's not there, we're going to say return null. And then after we've uh, basically defined and checked it here, we're going to say if controller layer is equal to null, we didn't get any good response, we need to create it. We're going to say controller layer. It's going to be equal to our app.project.activeitem.layers. We're going to add a null. And the argument for a null is the duration. So we'll say app.project.activeitem.duration. Then we also need to name it if we've just generated it from scratch. So controller layer dot name is equal to controller null. And now that should take care of the generation. If we go ahead and run this, it should just create our controller null here, the proper name. Now we need to loop through all those properties, create a slider control for each of them, and then adjust the values and the expression. You might have noticed that we were only using slider controls. This is sort of a simplified version of what you could make the script to be a greater version of, which could include things like color controls, angle controls, and things like that, which you could read in different types of data and make it a bit more advanced. So I'll create a variable to represent each of our sort of effects we're making. So I'll just say a slider effects, and then we're going to loop through our properties. We're going to start with var i is equal to zero, i is less than our properties dot length, increment i by one. And now for each time through, we're going to need to add a new effect 
So I'm going to say slider effect is equal to our controller null, controller layer. We're going to grab the effects and we're going to add a property called Adobe Slider Control. And that's going to add the actual slider control effect here. Now we need to change the name of it to be whatever uh, the selected properties name is. And we also need to change the value to whatever the selected properties is. So we're going to say slider effect.name is equal to our properties i.name. Then we'll say slider effect.property one dot set value. We want to set the value to be whatever our properties i value is. One problem I came across with just trying to blanket set the value to what the property might be is what if one of the properties selected doesn't have a value? For example, with this here, if I select one of the properties on this, this plugin here, it's also going to select the plugin group, which if I grab the value of this, it's going to give me undefined. So I'm going to only create all of this if the current property value is valid, if it has something, some value I can read, that's when I want to create it. So if properties I dot value is a valid, basically response, then we want to do all this. If it, if we check the value of say this group here called fast zebra, and it has no value, then we're not going to create anything for it. Only if it has something that we can actually read and modify. Lastly, we need to set the expression back on the original property. So I'm going to say properties I dot expression and the expression to link up to here is going to be this comp dot layer controller null. And we need to run and close this in single quotes and controller null dot effect and the effect name. We're going to break out here and add slider effect dot name and then we need to grab the slider property so we're going to end the slider name slider and that should set the expression properly so for starters i'm going to remove my controller null and i'm going to select rotation threshold spread and opacity and when i run this it's going to create rotation zebra threshold zebra spread and opacity which is perfect um, and to illustrate it, we can modify the values and see them updated now that we have them linked to the actual properties. And of course, like I said, you can go on and expand this to support more things like two dimensional values, uh, checkbox controls, color controls, uh, the sky is really the limit. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the GitHub to check out the code for this and follow us there. In the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you'd like to get more help outside of these videos or contribute, you can join the Discord server where we have a scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and many more channels. And you can also follow us on YouTube and become a member in one of these different support levels and get cool perks along the way. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.